The onset of summer brings with it a dramatic increase in the number of cases the SPCA are required to attend. The Arctic Zoo. Go ahead. Sue, we have a dog locked in a silver BMW at Rainbow's End. The dog is very distressed and they're going to have to break him. All right, I'm about 10 minutes away. I'll have that now. On a hot summer day, staff are stretched to the limit coping with calls from all around Auckland. At Rainbow's End, employees have already freed the dog from the car. I was just uh, alerted by another customer that a dog was locked in this car here, so I just came over to have a look and soon found out there's no windows down. The dog looked like it was having trouble breathing and breathing hard and all that sort of thing, so I tried to get hold of the owners through our PA system with uh, no luck. This is your dog, you don't deserve it. I should lock you in your car, see how you feel. I was parked here about uh, two and a half hours ago. We left and um, we come past and we saw the dog and we saw, oh, cruel bastards. I'd like to meet your owner personally. Responding to the emergency call is Inspector Sue Bourdais, who's on the scene within minutes. Have you put yeah. water on her? <laughs> yeah, well, not too much. It's really cool down. Okay. Have we got an owner? Do we have the owner? Okay. Your name is the owner, mate. You'll be lying on the ground. Soon after arriving, Sue goes looking for the best natural remedy, water. No, not too much, because you'll shock him. Excuse me. <laughs> we need to cool this dog yeah, down. Yeah, he has. Look, this is lukewarm. You know, she's yeah. like a human. You must have a lukewarm. In an emergency like this, even the public can get overly protective, but at least Francis acted quickly to help out. I'm going to get this dog back in space ASAP. Unfortunately, this is a common sight for the SPCA inspectors. On a hot day, the interior temperature of a vehicle can reach 45 degrees Celsius, and after 10 minutes, can be fatal. With the month of November comes Guy Fawkes Night and an increase in the amount of stray animals rescued by the SPCA. Inspector John Hedy Meyer is arriving with one of the many victims that this annual event has affected. OK, what we have here is a, another casualty of fireworks. This dog's obviously been spooked. It's run off its property onto the motorway. The finder was obviously following the, the car that hit it and took it through to a local vet. She's given us a uh, description of the location where um, the dog was hit, so hopefully the owner may be looking for this dog and uh, we could re reunite the two. Taken through to the hospital for a vet check, John's hopeful the dog, now named Map, has no serious injuries after being hit and run. No registration or collar. And no microchip to help locate his owner. How are you, big eyes? Ooh, that hurts. Okay, sorry. It's definitely geriatric. This is about the, what, eighth geriatric dog this weekend? I think what he needs is some pain medication yeah. and some rest. He's probably just got completely and utterly scared of those loud fireworks. I would hope somebody comes looking for him. He's old, but he's got a nice coat, and he doesn't seem to be flea-ridden at all. Jody's checks will be followed up by x-rays to ensure Map receives the medical care he needs. After seven days, if no one has claimed him, he'll be put up for adoption. Later in the day, Jody finds even her own cat has an injury following the events of Guy Fawkes Night. Friday night, while it was still light, thought it was pretty safe. They have lots of places to hide and didn't think the fireworks would be too bad, but it absolutely sounded like Baghdad. I mean, it was loud, booming fireworks. He walked in with his leg dangling, as you can see. He took a picture today and his leg is in four pieces. He must have either jumped and got his leg caught or run in front of a car. The cat's injuries are beyond even Jody's expertise. And since it's in four pieces, like I'm good at fixing the bones in two pieces, but when they're in four pieces, then I call the specialist. Unfortunately, that comes with a nice price tag. Like many other animal lovers, for Jody, it's a small price to pay to save her beloved pet. Fluff and stuff surgery is taking place at a veterinary specialist hospital, a facility where complex operations are performed, and a place where devoted pet owners are prepared to spend their last dollar. 
I want my cat's leg saved basically is the point and I'm willing to spend the money because he's my baby boy. He's my third out of four children out of my three cats and my dog. I don't have the two-legged kind, I only have the four-legged kind. And I figure since I don't have to send anybody to university or pay for weddings or anything like that, I can probably spend a couple grand on my cat's leg. But not everyone shares Jody's passion for their animals. For this elderly dog, the events of November 5 may bring about his downfall. His owner didn't want to make the drive out to pick him up. So he wouldn't come out and even identify the dog to make sure, absolutely positively sure it was his? No, he decided that he can't afford uh, any treatment on the dog because the dog's quite old, so he's chosen to surrender him to us. So we need to decide on what his prognosis is. He is such a lovely dog. He's got a really strong heart and he's got a beautiful build. A nice coat. Not bad teeth. Yeah, not bad teeth. We'll just put him under anesthetic and we'll take some x-rays and if we can fix you up, we'll fix you up. But sadly, x-rays showed the dog's injuries were too serious and he was put to sleep the same day. Another victim of uncontrolled fireworks. An owner has come looking for the dog left unattended in a hot car at Rainbow's End. He's now facing an inquisition and potential prosecution. Just take, yeah, take a deep breath. So what happened? Your wife went back oh, to, partner, or your partner, sorry, your partner. She's got a BMW. She wanted to take my dog so she yeah. could look after the car. She hasn't got an alarm. Well, she knows the drill. She just um, okay. wasn't listening when I told her. Oh, she should know anyway. The yeah. thing is that your dog Yo, would be the... most certainly dead. But luckily for this man, the SPCA and the public's quick intervention has saved the dog's life. Ironically, the owner of the car had used the dog to protect her new vehicle, but a forced entry to the car was exactly what was needed to save the dog from likely death. And she had the dog out with her for the day, went to Rainbow's and parked up, it was cloudy, got distracted by the rides, the kids, etc., etc., and um, came back and found the dog gone. Leaving a dog in a hot car for over two hours is a serious and often fatal act of negligence but not an uncommon occurrence for the SPCA in the summer months. She's pretty much been run through the calls by him and um, then she's had to face us and kind of front up and she'll be getting a written warning. No, I think they learned a good lesson there, I really do. The owner is getting his dog back, but it's a cautionary tale for pet owners. Thank you very much. See Make ya. sure he's got plenty of water. Yep. Oh, definitely. Three days. Right. See ya. Last week, Karen removed 11 dogs from a property in Mount Albert, where a dog boarding facility was being run, along with a backyard puppy breeding program. The animals were housed in poor conditions, but today the SPCA have agreed to release them, providing the owner improves the premises. So you have to pay for them? Okay. okay. He's been through the same process before and will have to pay costs to the SPCA for temporarily housing his dogs, and it's a princely sum. Okay. Take all dogs today. It'll be um, $1,058.32. While the owner is eager to have his dogs return home with him, it seems he still needs some lessons from SPCA staff in how to care for them. Put them in the box. How far are you going, Mount Albert? It's a bit too, um, bit too small for four puppies to go in there, though. Two, maybe. There's too many going into that small car. Uh, the box they're thinking of putting the, the four puppies in, they're just jumping out of it now. They're going to be running around the car. It's not safe. They have to slam on their brakes. The puppies are through the windscreen. I don't think we'll let them take them all today. Canine attendant Taryn makes the call that it's not safe for the owner to transport the 11 dogs all at once. It's not safe for them to squash them all in the back, and it's not safe for you guys. Yeah. You want to take these guys and then... Yeah, and the two Yorkies. And the two Yorkies yeah. as well. And come back tomorrow. <laughs> And to ensure the dog's safety, staff lent him some cages. The SPCA will be keeping an eye on this man to ensure improvements are made to house the dogs adequately. But it's not just domestic four-legged creatures that sometimes need rescuing. Today, Todd Neal's job as an inspector has taken him to the seaside suburb of Takapuna, where a penguin's taken up residence under a house. Yep. Cool, I'm Todd from the SPCA. You give us a call about a penguin? Yeah. Cool, do you want to... Show us where it is. Yeah, sure. With the house under the demolition hammer, time is of the essence. The house is demoing. Yeah. I've decided to pull a board up and um, to see the penguin and it's um, sitting in a couple of eggs. Oh, yeah. There she is right there. So I end up just bringing the SPC up. Oh, brilliant. 
Todd sights the penguin, but it's not sticking around to make his rescue job easy. She's moved further that way, I'd say. It's a little blue penguin. They're the smallest penguins in the world and only come ashore under the cover of darkness. She's gone that way. I'll grab the eggs out now. Little blue penguins are also known to breed underground in burrows or natural holes, but will make use of any man-made structures while they're nesting. You can obviously move around a bit and I think she's moved just, just out of reach underneath another um, beam. So I'll have a look just down here and see if she's here, but we might have to pull up a bit more of the floor. It looks like Todd's going to have to enlist the demolition team to help get this penguin out. Oh, there she goes. She's heading, heading back towards the stairs, like the front stairs. After all attempts to rescue the penguin fail, Todd realises he has no choice but to do it the hard way. He's going in. 45 minutes later, success. Oh yeah, I see her. Ow! <laughs> yep, she can bite still. <laughs> Grab her! Yep, I got her. <laughs> the penguin is believed to have been under the house for three days and was not going to surrender easily. Great. <laughs> Here we go. But the teamwork's paid off. Patrick went up and around her and with a like a found a, luckily found a really, really long stick. And then I came further down there and I just managed to reach over and grab her. And here comes Patrick now, I think. Our penguin wrangler. <laughs> oh, <laughs> not happy to see you. I'll take her up to our bird rescue lady up in Rothsay Bay, um, Sylvia. She's known as the penguin lady and she, she looks after these guys. And I don't know about her eggs. She may have been off them for too long, but we'll um, get them up there as soon as we can. And, See what Sylvia can do with them. She's got an incubator, so maybe they might um, be able to be salvaged. We'll get her underway. Have a lovely day. Thank you. Todd's taking the penguin to SPCA Birdwing volunteer Sylvia Durant, who runs a rescue centre on the North Shore and cares for birds of all varieties. She's in good condition. Sylvia's convinced of the blue penguin's health, but has concerns for its eggs. Well, I'll know within a day or two if I go in and bring her out and then touch the eggs and find the eggs are nice and warm, which means she's incubating. But if they're cold, well, then I'll just let her go. Penguins are no stranger to Sylvia. She has several other invalid penguins in her care. This is a juvenile. She's probably barely six weeks old, but she's underweight. She's skin and bone. Look, there's just nothing of her. She's 490 grams when she should be 800. It's a lot more hand friendly than the uh, one we've just pulled out from underneath the house. She's been here four days. She was just found on the beach. Usually uh, the indication of, of starvation is the color of the beak inside the mouth. But she's just pink, which means she's lost her parents a fair while ago. And she's come out of the nest and looking for where's mum, where's the food? And that's why she was able to be brought in. She's lucky. If she was left probably another week, she'd be uh, come in and die. This penguin's life was also in danger before Sylvia intervened to help it, after it was abandoned during molting season. And she's a lot calmer, of course, because now that I've got her, she knows I, she can't get away. <laughs> We're not silly. OK. For our rescued penguin, it's a waiting game to find out if she'll incubate her eggs and save her offspring. Back at the SPCA, an animal hoping for collection from his owner is Map the hit-and-run victim that ran frightened from fireworks on Guy Fawkes night. I hope some people come looking for him. He's making a steady recovery, and convinced that he's someone's pet, the SPCA have called in the local paper to help find his owner. You can definitely tell he's been hit. Inside of his groin is bruised and inside of his armpit, so you can tell, like, something like a cartoon where his legs all went splat out, and he probably splatted. Um, but he's come back very well. The problem is, is we're having trouble finding his family. He's in great body condition, he's got lovely coat, he's got a great nature, and he's desexed. we like that, he's neutered. And so his, somebody's really looked after him. Hopefully someone that knows Map will notify his owners that he's taken refuge at the village. Karen has returned to check on the property where the SPCA has requested an improvement to the housing conditions for a large number of dogs. This is much better than the setup that I saw last week. They're out of the cages, out of the garage. I need to make sure he's got some kennels there or something for the dogs for adequate shelter. He's got fresh water, so I'm very happy. The dogs look a lot happier as well. So I'll just pop around the back and see if there's any more. 
The owner is running a makeshift boarding facility for dogs here, but hasn't complied with all the SPCA's demands. Here's the cages that they were in. I've told him that I want um, the cages thrown out, so the dogs will never be have to kept in those cages again. So I'll check on that next week. Yorkie and Samoid puppies that Karen suspected were part of a backyard breeding program had been kept in the sleep out. No puppies. But on hearing some yapping, she's pleased to find the Samoids now running freely in the yard. Hello. This is OK. We've got some shelter down here and some water. He had instructions to put the puppies in at night time. I can't see any evidence of that, so I will need to talk to him about the setup that he's got here. It's also going to be a difficult area for him to clean, I can see. This is OK, but still needs some work, so I'll contact him today. Once again, much happier than in the dark shed. I think he's probably going to move on again. Uh, he's quite elusive and he always owns a lot of dogs and just moves from property to property, so I'll come back the next few days and just have another recheck. And it's going to be one of those jobs that I will have to keep coming back and, and checking on, I think. It's a big day of bird rescue for the SPCA inspectors, but there's a new set of obstacles that's going to test the skills of John Hedemeyer. OK, we've got a, some ducklings that are apparently um, stuck in, a, in the stormwater overflow, basically ahead, just to see how we can get them out. Mum's hanging around, which is a good sign. Should make things easier for us to perform this rescue. The difficulty we have is that we've, uh, we've left the uh, inflatable at work, so um, we just have to improvise what we've got here. You can see the water level of how deep the exit pipe is. We should be able to work with, with what we've got here. A bit of polystyrene might be able to use as a bridge. Without his inflatable raft, he's going to improvise with a piece of polystyrene found nearby. Oh, don't know if it's going to take my weight or just... Ah, oh, no problems. As John approaches, our mother duck becomes increasingly anxious about her young offspring teetering on the edge of the stormwater drain. It's an impressive act of animal rescue that John would go to such great lengths to save these birds. But to this SPCA inspector, it's just another day out of the office. We've got two. I've seen four, so I'm not going to release these guys yet because um, mum might just take off. But he's also lost his rescue craft. Bugger. Now he's hoping no one will need to rescue him as his polystyrene raft has left him stranded. That was a close call. Four little ducklings all account for. What I'll do now, I'm just going to release them. His mum. Finally, all the ducklings are released and the family reunited. Happy ending for the uh, ducklings, however, it's not for me. While I was trying to rescue these guys, um, my polystyrene floated into the middle of the pond, so I'll have to see how I'm going to get back. But he's pleased he remembered those waders. The campaign to find the owner of MAP, the dog that ran from fireworks, has failed. But a member of the public, Jackie, read the article about him in her local paper and is keen to adopt him. He reminded her of a dog she had as a child. I just saw him in the paper and he just looked, you know, really cute and looked like he needed a home. <laughs> and I used to have a little doggy and she passed away from cancer, so I sort of missed having a small dog. Yeah. Jackie wants to make sure Map gets on with her German Shepherd and first impressions look positive. Despite his ordeal, freaking out at the sound of fireworks, getting run over by a car and no owner coming to claim him, Map has finally found a new home to go to. There you go, darling. Then I can talk to you on the way home, OK? Hey, you don't have to get used to it coming in the car. Because you guys come everywhere with me. Someone else going home is our little blue penguin. This is a penguin that we uh, rescued from underneath the house just up off Takabuna Beach. She had some eggs with her, but unfortunately she's decided that she's not going to incubate them, so she's actually left them alone and that they've, they've gone cold and there's no hope for them anymore. But she's a healthy uh, female penguin and basically ready to go back out to sea and, and start looking for her mate. You're rearing to go, aren't you? Ready? Ready? Go. 
she was off. Sort of had a little bit of a look around to start with to see where she was and then worked out that that was the way out to sea and she was off. She was off through the waves. Couldn't be better. Always a good feeling when you can release a wild animal back into the wild.